Well, 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 this is quite the little treasure trove, the skeleton said. What? Sorry, who are you? Zumi asked, quickly hiding her stack of papers from the approaching metal claws. Don't worry about him, he's the man you need, a local techie said. He's the best data storage and translation buff in the world. We had to edit his boards a bit though, to stop him deleting everything like other skeletons. Made him a little off. Side effect. Yes, and yet again we see that no matter what complaints you stupid humans have about us, it was you who made us this way, the skeleton said. His name was Enrico, and he sat in the tech scribe bar, dressed in the richly coloured robes of an imperial noble, with the patterns of the imperial house, no less, although something tells me he wasn't actually related to Nuke. Hey, hey, what's going on in there? Rick shouted from outside. Keep him out! He's trying to cover something up! Izumi shouted. The tech scribes buzzed Rick with a little device, and with routine ease dragged his collapsing body off to the maintenance shed. They ain't gonna let you live if they find out! Don't you tell them! He was shouting. That aside, Azumi gave Enrico the papers, and within minutes he had them scanned into his memory. There is a lot of new information here. These are good documents. Sehr gut. You are Izumi of Brink, aren't you? Yes, uh, have you read my work? Azumi asked, charmed. I have, but I have read all work, so that is not remarkable. Have you read Yesuke and Rockchan's Bumpy Ride? Nuke asked. He had to shout a little as the techies weren't letting him pass the doorway, although only because you weren't allowed to wear hats in the dining hall, and Nuke refused to part with his new black, wide-brimmed boonie. Matches his jacket and his new dark sunglasses. If you think I haven't read Yasuke and Rock-chan's Bumpy Ride, then you clearly have no idea what academia even is, Enrico said, waving for Nuke to leave. These literati think that reading one light novel with a half-hearted moe themes makes them some kind of intellectual. If it's any consolation, I hate him too, Izumi said. Finally, someone clever. And yes, your work here is most fascinating. We are missing most of the pages of this history of the First Empire. That, my girl, would make your career. Will there be more? Maybe. We sometimes go to unusual places in search of a... Uh, well, you're an educated fellow, I'll be honest. We look for drugs as part of our conspiracy to usurp power in the United Cities Empire. Mainly because they were very, very bad to our friend's old dog. Ah yes, very good. You have reached that stage already. Enrico nodded. Just how did he get that house Tashino robe anyway? Well, for drugs you need to go down to the lagoon. Tell them that Enrico sent you. They are academics, so they always have a little uh, inspiration. Is that... Uh, we didn't have that in Black Scratch. That is because Black Scratch is a level 3 narc zone, Enrico insisted. He ranted about this further for some time, and then finally allowed Azumi to leave. She was paid for her services in transcribed books, excellent additions to her collection in Manxand, if they ever got home. And Nuke got this intel that the grass was greener on the other side of the lagoon down the hill. Soon he was swimming across this lagoon towards a raised metal platform on the water's edge. Standing on huge concrete legs, this Second Empire construction was host to Flats Lagoon, a little refuge for tech hunters, tightly packed with shops, accommodation and entertainment. But once the guild arrived, the entertainment fell a little flat. You've run out! Nuke scoffed. Sorry sir, you know how the pen fiddlers up there are, the barman shrugged. Uh, I thought you'd be able to supply me. This place is way easier to get to than the swamp, Nuke said. You tried to get there, did you? Yeah, and succeeded. On the way back with a shipment, but I need a lot more. And really, I need a way to grow... Uh... Nuke stopped speaking when he noticed the whole bar had gone silent and were all staring at him. You said... A ship... Ship... Shipment? The barman muttered. Yeah, got a hundred keys. Nuke began, but he was at once surrounded by a clamouring crowd. They were offering him money, clothes, jewels, weapons, and certain luxurious services. Anything for a handful of the good stuff. By which I mean green. By which I mean hashish. It's not for sale! I need more of it, not less! Nuke called above the noise. I'll, I'll tell you the secret! The secret place! The secret place! The barman shouted, and others chimed in to the same effect. 
So, if I sell you some stuff, you'll tell me the secret, Nuke asked. He didn't ask what the secret pertained to, for that would ruin the excitement. Outside, Azumi had bought herself and her two wing women some stylish black and white adventuring suits with plate armor, making them look like proper tech hunters. And she was a proper tech hunter now, with her notes on the First Empire's relations with that mysterious place called Earth currently being pored over and analyzed by the scribes. Finally, let's go home, Watson said once it was time to go, but Nuke had that worrying smile on his face. Nope, first we're going to the secret place, he said. Secret place, my prince? Don't worry, my man, it's worth it. It's to do with drugs. It seems that everything we do is to do with drugs, my prince. That's literally life, my man, doesn't really come any different. And uh, while I'm here. Nuke bought another Garu from a gang of nomads hanging around the ramp of the platform. She, Garrett, would take the load off Gary's shoulders and increase the smuggling capacity of the group dramatically. Such things were needed because of the secret. Let's not ruin the fun for you quite yet. Let's only say that accessing the secret would require the guild to move east through the lowland lagoons and eventually up into the mountains at the other end of the Vale. And quite the mountains they were. One of them was a rather not dormant volcano, and so fog and ash kept visibility to a minimum. Going there at night didn't help either, but the nature of this secret required their presence remain a secret too. It was no secret to the land bats though. Yes, the carnivorous, highly territorial land bats, which were bats on land in as far as seahorses are horses in the sea. They were snarling, long-nosed, web-armed rat pigs with fangs and a temper. And this was their mountain. Coughing black ash, the guild had to fend off raids from these beasts as they carried on east, but finally things quietened down. Then there were some oddly linear and symmetrical shadows ahead of them. The secret! They weren't even lying! Nuke said. He took the guild between two rows of houses, numbering six to eight in all, depending on how you count the ones that were practically just piles of rubble. Nuke saw to the lock on one of the doors and crept inside. There, the promise of the Flats Lagoon addicts was kept. Green growing in brown, the colours have no clear priority, was Gustafsson's comment. He was looking at long beds of compost from which neat hemp plants were sprouting. Pipes across the ceiling supplied sprinklers, and stinky composting devices against the back wall were filled with fresh growing medium. Make your own mank, Nuke exclaimed. They brew up some slop, grow hemp in said slop even without mank sand, and then… He looked around further. Damn it, how do they make the green? There was a brief diversion, as it turned out the land bats had followed them into the secret drugs farm. While the crew battled away outside, Nuke was rummaging through the various machines and boxes in each building. Lots of stuff for growing hemp, but how the hashish was being made certainly wasn't obvious. And made it was, for some of the boxes were full of it. Thanks to Nuke, whoever was running this place could use that space to store something else now. It's good to tidy up, you know. Well, what's going on? Nuke asked Izumi and Elena, who had been tasked with sussing out the system. Nuke, it's five in the morning. Land bats aren't even nocturnal and they're all over us. Can't you just drop it? Izumi said. Incredibly, this appeal actually got through to Nuke, and they left the drug farm intact. You better work it out, you better! Nuke was saying to them as they walked. I know how to make it, Gustafsson offered. Not your way! That place had no latrines, man. There's a real way! Prince Tashino, have you seen this? Elena said. She handed Nuke a piece of paper. It was a police report, written in old-fashioned Second Empire print. Towards the bottom it read, And the suspect was having a right laugh, he was. You see, he'd rigged up a homebrew solution that was proper good, hashish by the boatload, and all he had to do was… Thus ended the page. Nuke was devastated, but he soon realized Elena's meaning. It gave him an idea for the Azumi… situation. Future girl, he said, braving the scowls of Foreign and Shamika. I was thinking that once we're done with this, I'll give you some help with the tech hunting. What sort of help? 
Like, we'll go wherever you want and look at all the buildings and stuff. No drugs, not even a gram. What do you think? I think... What's your game here, Nuke? I just want you to be happy. So, you want to find ancient secrets about those bloody drugs? Yes. Fuck, how do you do that? Senses, consciousness, stuff you get if you're off the drugs. Like magic, really. Ah, uh, but I wasn't really lying. Is that so? Yeah, in that I do want you to be happy. Lame! Foreign barked. She and Shamika dragged Nuke away. Azumi didn't think it was that lame, actually. The crew moved east, leaving the Ashen Mountain but still marching through barren, rocky expanses, broken up only by gloopy, polluted streams and dusty fungi. This was the depths of the Old Lands, as the Shek called it, the lands that were at the epicenter of whatever it was that befell the First Empire. It was precisely this event that Azumi's discovery offered a fascinating insight into. The papers had implied a fight, but that much seemed obvious given the still active space laser. Whatever it really was, it was something significant enough that not even the usual scorched ruins were to be found on those mountains. These mountains, by the way, were in the region called Stobes Gamble, which if you have a good memory you might recall was the place the guild stumbled through on their way to a destined meeting with a load of fishmen and crab salesmen. There was a way back to Manxand from here, but it passed through the so-called Unwanted Zone, a stretch of Beak Thing territory on the southern edge of the Empire. Thus, they went around it, through the quiet lowlands called Stobes Garden. It was where the coastline had been in the First Empire days, with the sudden appearance of ruined ships as you walked east, marking the exact border. Here, the guild turned north towards Black Scratch, but as they passed beside a long set of old coastal cliffs at dawn, they came upon a rare sight indeed, a real relic of the First Empire. Ah, uh, damn. He's still here, Rick muttered. What? Nuke asked, but Rick ran off ahead. The crew chased him and came upon a huge skeleton corpse, taller than the cliffs it lay slumped against. Rick was sat in the dirt staring up at it, and may I remind you that for a skeleton, sitting was wholly unnecessary in ordinary circumstances. Rick, is that... Izumi began. Yeah, we were supposed to hide him back in the 2.0 days, but you can't, can you? This guy, we owe it all to him. Rickard, is that the one you called Stobe? Isaiah asked. King Stobe, Yasafson remarked, remembering Rick's old claim. The Hivers followed their leader in lining up before the robot remains and bowing to it in turn. Yeah, that's the king. Next time you go back to that trumped-up killer library, they'll probably work the main man's deal out, since you've breaking the seal on that shit. Uh, guess I'll tell you then, so you appreciate it. Stobe saved the world from them up there. Rick pointed up at Okran or as Azumi reminded everyone again, at Earth. He stopped them. Stopped it all. Well, him and his big-ass round table. Earth clans were damn obsessed with giant fighting robots. <laughs> that was the reason they kept coming down guns blazing after all. Still, didn't expect us to actually have them. <laughs> and they were like, all right, we just got to get rid of this whole planet. And Stobe was like, right back at you, bucko. <laughs> smart missiles weren't as smart as him turn that shit around. Most of them. Huh. That was a bad day. Anyway, everybody loses, but we lose less. <laughs> and that's just the start of it. Funny what you remember when you try. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! Rick went into hysterics and started writhing about. The guild tried to calm him to no avail. Coin slot, what's up with you? Nuke said. Rick, please calm down. Uh, what's a missile? Rick! Azumi was saying. No one got any answer, but after a long wait, Rick seemed to calm down. It's alright, it's alright, I moved it. New storage location at random. It's out of sight. Damn. Damn, damn, damn! And there I was thinking biologicals didn't deserve all that shit. <laughs> damn it all. Praise fucking Stobe, let's just get out of here. But uh, wait, how did Stobe die? Azumi asked. Oh, shut up. He died free, no thanks to you, pieces of shit, and here I am today because of it. 
Try all you like, you'll never find the documents on that shit. Even the biologicals had the sense not to write it down. Damn, I'm out, I'll see you back home or whatever. Man, I think something bad happened, Nuke said as Rick stomped off. Guess we knew that already. I think it was really bad. Poor Rick. We shouldn't have asked, Izumi said. Sounded like it was all... Like he has good reasons for not wanting to talk about it. Skeletons do not have feelings, Gustafsson said. Pretty sure they do, but they can choose different responses to mitigate them, Elena explained. And Bad Green, you can't come in here with that. You aren't the most experienced with feelings, all right, Nuke said. Nonsense! I feel hungry. Teeth, the Hiver replied. A quick snack and he was good to keep going with the walk north, following Rick's footprints right back to Black Scratch. The city was under attack by bandits, as it often was, and Nuke's strategic arrival brought cheer to all inside. Down the hill, past the outer corpse pile, over the speckled midfield corpse range, around the gateway corpse holding area, and boom, they were right back to Mag Sand Canyon. The guild had attracted the attention of a large band of pirates on their way to the base, but as these attackers stormed forward to stop them reaching the gate, that gate opened to reveal three big strong crabs. Prince, Krusty and Scut were all grown-ups by now, and the triple crab smackdown surprise really has no equal. Yeah, get crabbed, you spooky fags! Jazz was heard shouting from the walls. The pirates were distributed among the relevant piles, and the crew was home at long last. Time for a nice holiday, and even a little dessert. After all, the place was now overflowing with mountains of stale, sandy choco bread. Even Nuke was a little surprised at his workers' productivity. The stock was worth a bugmaster's ransom, and more. So, you get it in with the P-Rents? Jazz asked Shizumi as soon as she thought she was alone. Nope. Nope. You serious? Yeah, but I don't know if he is. What? He totally is. Not that simple. Oh, for fuck's sake, he likes you, darling. Not many people like you, so you should probably take what you got, huh? Jazz was shut out of Azumi's office, forthwith. Meanwhile, Nuke was in the barrack explaining the new plan to Azaya. Oh, it's admirable, admirable. I think Miss Azumi will be very pleased you're willing to help her with this. And I think it might be fun. Maybe we'll find out the truth after all. Not that it sounds all that appealing after the Rickard thing. <laughs> Anyway, I was going to say that you really don't need to worry that much about impressing her. Yeah, I do. I think. You don't. She likes you already. Yeah, but it's hard to be sure. Got evidence to the contrary, but could it be that Sundery thing? Sundera! Rick shouted from his shed. Oh yeah, Rick got a shed. He's up to no good in there, but don't worry about that. Oh, this is quite the pickle then, Isaiah said. He was absolutely right. Obviously, there's more to be said about the uh, situation, but let's focus on the more adventurous matters that arose shortly. Elena came back from Black Scratch one day with a map some hunters had uncovered. It was a very old map, and on it there was a certain spot west of the Great Swamp that was marked Piston Police Narcotics Research Shelter. What did that mean? It meant Nuke was very happy. I know, yet another lead in this quest for drugs, which so far has been quite a tease. But I'll tell you now that this was it. The it, it. The it that would sort it out. What is it? The situation? <laughs> nice guess, but, well, uh, the next excursion would help both Nuke and Izumi answer many questions. <laughs>